All right. All right, looks like we're recording. So Victoria, thank you very much for joining me. I'm just really excited to spend a couple minutes getting to know a little bit more about your story. And then hopefully you'll share some things about your story, about the work that you do that will be of interest or of value to my Facebook community. So thanks for joining me. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Garrett. Appreciate yeah. you asking me on here today. Yeah, well, I appreciate you making the time and showing up. So. We'll just kind of jump right into it. I only want to spend about 10 or 15 minutes. So let's jump right into it. What can you tell me about your personal story? And of course, I mean this in the context of the struggles with or the battles with or just the knowledge of addiction and of recovery, because I think that'll be the greatest value to uh, my Facebook community. So what can you tell me about your personal journey? Absolutely. So my personal journey started when, uh, well, uh, 15, 20, 25 years ago, I had- So uh, when you were two. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, I uh, had been um, dabbling in pills and um, illicit drug activity, and I recognized pretty quickly that it could become a big problem. So a close family friend had suggested my getting onto a program uh, a, a, a MAT program, hmm. uh, maintenance, uh, medical sure. assisted treatments. Yep. And so I took that path, got onto the medical assisted treatment, and uh, that seemed to be okay. Uh, and through time, I recognized that even on the medical assisted treatments, I was relapsing and uh, chronic relapsing. It, it, it was deb debilitating sure. and I recognized that it was time for me to just clear myself of all of it and mm -hmm. I made attempts to get myself cleared of being on any medical assisted treatment yeah so what yeah. are some of the what are some of the pros that came from that and then obviously because you ultimately decided to get away from it what were some of the biggest cons that came from it or not uh, yeah or downsides to it Okay, so the pros were that I would have extended bouts of clean time, but then I would have also periods of chronic relapse. Mm -hmm. So it didn't feel stabilized. It, yeah. it did in moments, but long term, it didn't feel for me to, to stabilize me. Yeah, that makes sense. Were the, was there a common trend between those times that you relapsed? Like, was there a certain trigger or a certain insecurity or just, you know, a certain thing that seemed to show up in your life right before you'd relapsed that you kind of saw as a trend? Strong stress. Yeah. Stress moments. Just the ebbs and flows of, like the ebbs of life. Sure. Uh, stressful moments, whether it be work stress. Mm -hmm. I was a functioning uh, addict or uh I was able to, but I was in college part of that time. And so when I would have uh, big papers to write, things like that, I would yeah. just revert back to, I would relapse. Right, right. Go back to that thing that you knew that helped provide that release yeah. from the, the tension or the pain. Yeah. What? Well, uh, yeah. So what, what would your advice or what are your thoughts or what do you share with other people who are saying or who have struggled and are saying like, hey, what's this MAT? What can you tell me about it? Are you for it or are you against yeah. it? Do you have certain advice that you give? Right. Okay. So I do have advice around that. So if someone is a longtime user, longtime chronic user, mm -hmm. uh, I would advise if someone felt that that was a good method for them to maybe get on Suboxone, get on, uh, I believe it's the Vitrol shot that's once a month. And this is specifically for those, uh, my specialty is opioids. And so if someone is taking pain pills, mm -hmm. um, that could be a good method or street heroin. Uh, but then for someone who's only been using for a short amount of time, they hurt their back, the doc had been giving them medication. I'd, I would suggest someone uh, really doing, uh, taking other avenues, um, doing some spirit work, going to yeah. retreat if they needed to go into actual treatment, but not 
getting on to medical assisted treatment because it can then become more debilitating. And that's what I think happened for me. Uh, I, I hadn't been in the capacity to actually be on uh, methadone is what I was on for 15 years. Uh, yeah, it was a very long time. I'm actually, I feel like I'm a miracle at this point, quite frankly, because yeah. people don't just get off of it. I did make right. multitudes of attempts and uh, I ended up having to uh, transplant myself from one part of the country to yeah. another, getting myself into uh, the space to do the work. And yeah. I was mentally prepared for that. I think I took a good three months of really working out the details and what that would look like for me and my family. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah, that's a, so I'm a huge advocate for supporting anybody's um, journey in recovery, however that recovery looks for them and however they want it to look. Um, and that's one thing that I, I you know, I kind of warn people or just a cautionary thing just to understand, but going MAT, like that's an awesome step. If that's the right one for you, it's an awesome step, but don't allow that to be the end. Like don't allow that to be the end point. You know, you, you, there's so many benefits of it in the, the level, you know, the severity of the consequences that can help reduce in your life. But it's not yet, yeah, but it's not supposed to be like a stop gap. It's not supposed to be something that you're on forever. So that should always kind of be in your mind is like, what's my coming off of this plan or what's my transition plan away from this? I say that, but then also if, if that's what, you know, if that's what somebody wants their recovery to look like and they feel like that's the best that they can do and they want to stay on it for the rest of their life, well then, you know, that's their decision also. And who am I to say what their recovery should look like? But it sounds like you were kind of aware that like, Hey, I don't want to be on this forever. It's not really doing what I need. And, but you felt, did you feel imprisoned to it or, or uh, I did feel activated by it? I really truly felt chained to yeah. it. Waking up for me, I had woken up sick every mm -hmm. single morning. Uh, I have so a daily withdrawal. Yeah. Yeah. So I was having daily withdrawals and uh, that just really didn't feel good for me. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are able to move through that. They recognize right away. They'll get their uh, treatment and they'll be okay. I yeah. personally wanted to get away from that and uh, I've been able to, it's, it's been quite the journey and yeah. even getting off of the methadone, I think takes planning, uh, careful planning, ensuring that people are taking care of their, their whole being. And, and when I say their whole being, I'm talking about spiritually, um, emotionally, um, physically, especially physically. Yeah. Uh, this, these medications go into our body and they affect us. The drugs had affected us. And so making sure that we really are taking strong care of the physical form so that the other sure. pieces can fall into place as well. Yeah, that's great. Was there something that happened, uh, you know, kind of when you decide when you were committed and you were going to make that change? Is something happened? Did something come together? Was there something that really inspired you or kind of gave you that little bit of extra courage to push you over and help you transition from the MAT to beyond it? Right. Uh, well, right. <laughs> A series of events took place. Mm -hmm. that I, I personally would not like to get into it in this. Oh yeah, no, that's no, certainly fine. It's I, I, and really kind of what I'm getting at is like, were there positive things that kind of came together to give you that courage or give you that feeling of support so that you felt you could take that, that right. next step? No, it wasn't anything positive. Really, okay. it wasn't anything positive that took place for me. It was yeah. all negatory events. And I was seeing that it was going to get worse before it could ever get better. And I recognized yeah. that began to plan. So kind of like uh, that moment of clarity that you're like, uh Oh, this journey can't go any further. I can't go down this road any further. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, it's great that you recognize that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that get to that place and either they don't recognize it or they do recognize it, but their sense of self-worth and their courage and their self-esteem is just in such a terrible place that they say, it can't go much further down this path, but there's nothing I can do to change it. So they continue right. down that path. And very fortunate for us that that wasn't your story and very fortunate for the many people that you get to inspire and work with. That wasn't your story. Absolutely. Um, so on to the people that you do get to work with, you have some best advice that you share with people. So two different audiences, the first audience, people that are very new in recovery, um, you know, their first zero to six months and then people who have been in recovery for, for months or years. So starting with that zero to six months, what, what's something that you would share with them to, um, you know, your best advice from your, from your journey? 
Remembering that everything takes time, that it is a process. Sometimes things can get worse before it gets better. But to reach out and ask for the help, even for those who are being helped, to continue asking for help. You can't ask for help just once and then think that things are going to get better. It's a process. Continuing yeah. on the daily to reach out for the support that you need. Mm. So for the long-term people, uh, wow, I, I guess it would be the same thing, continuing to remember that it's, it really is a process and uh, that it's always growth and development always yeah i always thought like when i got clean i thought for sure that it was just going to be this one thing i had done this wonderful yeah. thing for myself and my family and everything was just going to be great it's and, like painting and, the house and once you're done that's it and then you just kind of move on with your life absolutely yeah. and it, not to say the victory though and, and that's too very important to mention here that the victory is there the victory yeah. does come so yeah. not to forget that. So it's not, so you're not saying that as to be as like, hey, it's daunting and it's going to be a struggle that you have for the rest of your life. You're just saying that it's something that you're going to even want to continue to journey down and continue to uh, invest your time in. Absolutely. Taking the time to really uh, allow life to unfold and sitting in it wherever you're at. If you're yeah. having rough moments, this too shall pass. Mm. When you're yeah, having great. good moments, this too shall pass. We need sure. to keep ourselves protected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. And do you think that that was something kind of back to that er that time in your life where you kept relapsing? Is that something that, that sets you up for that? Like kind of getting complacent in the good times and then not building that 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 good place or that mental strength or whatever it was, discharging that stress. And then you kind of got caught off guard. You feel like that was part of the cycle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I wasn't even guarding myself. I was just living in the moment. There was no sort of planning, just yeah. uh, lollygagging through life. Like I'll just take every day as it comes. And mm. if that can be important, it's also important to have, uh, safety guards around us. I know, I know that when I do certain things, I might be triggered. If I go into a grocery store and they're certain, um, in a certain neighborhood, maybe I might run into someone or whatnot. Yeah. So safety guarding against that and shifting or pivoting into another area, go to another neighborhood. If it really truly is a problem sure. for you, protecting yourself, those sorts of well, things. especially, in a, and I think, you know, a huge thing for me and a huge thing I tell other people is that awareness piece, like having that awareness too, like someday a particular trigger might not really bother you. Another day when you're more stressed out, you're more exhausted, you've got 10 extra things on your plate, that same trigger, that same event could push you over the edge or could be too much for you at that time. So to your point, like, you know, if you are extra stressed out, if you are extra worn down, then recognize, yeah, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to a different place because I don't want a chance putting myself in that in that environment, but it comes back to awareness. Absolutely. Self-awareness is super important. One of the things that I do t speak to my client base about is halt. What is it? Is it we're stopping in, in sometimes in the beginning of recovery, it could mean taking uh, a, an alarm clock or mm -hmm. a watch and every hour doing a check um, and asking yourself, uh, am I hungry? Halt, H-A-L-T, am I Am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I tired? Or am I lonely? So, yeah. and like the lonely piece, I think is important for weekends because people, uh, you know, on a Friday night, they want to go hang out with their friends. But if they have a strong um, tendency towards relapse or being with old people that could cause relapse, yeah. these are the sorts of things that are that that's important to just mm -hmm. stop, sure. halt. Am I hungry? Am I tired? Am I angry? Am I lonely? So that's another really awesome tip that yeah, very cool. with, my, with my people, yeah. Yeah. So I know that you've taken a lot of what you've learned in your journey and it really inspired you to help other people who have faced similar struggles. What was that, what was that big inspiration or when was it that you decided that you wanted to kind of focus on that? Yeah. So uh, I didn't feel confident 
at first because I, I didn't really trust myself. I, I didn't, mm. I've had uh, friends and family say, you're so good working with people. You ought to, can, you know, have your own practice. And it was uh, just this last year, my, my ninth, 10th year that I finally made the choice that, okay, I've had enough time. My uh, program is proven. It's, it, it, it's solid. We're good yeah. to go. We can teach other people my methods. Yeah. Very cool. And how's that journey been so far? It's been quite a learning journey. Uh, it's been really good. Uh, people have taken to, to the work that I do with them and uh, people are, are, are doing well. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I know you said a lot of things there that are of tremendous value and I'm sure that you'll planted some seeds and somebody just kind of right at the right time when they need to hear it. So thank you for your time. For anybody that's listening in, if you want to go find some more of the stuff that Victoria Wilson does, I want to make sure I threw your whole name in there. I'll tag it, of course, in the post. But you can go to Rehabilitation Station. You can search for that Facebook group and you can go and you kind of connect with her there and learn a little bit more about her and her journey and the inspiration that she has to help other people. Any parting shots, any last thing you want to say before we uh, end this? Uh, if you have uh, a need, give me a, give me a call. Shout out. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Be well.